Welcome everyone, Kevin Carpenter here with Michael Case, which I'm super excited about because I've known Michael for longer than, you know, I, it's been a few years that I've known Michael and, and I say that from CPP con and C plus plus now, and I finally get to actually chat with him because this year he's coming back to C plus plus now, um, to give a keynote. And so Michael, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. So C plus plus now, as I understand you have some deeper history than most, you know, like Zach Lane, I interviewed him and he's been on the BoostCon email list for a long time and he's on the board and I know you are too, but you're at, you, you actually gave a talk at BoostCon before it was C++ now, right? I did. I, Zach has me beat out, I believe. I think he, he's gone to everyone. I, I joined BoostCon the year after it started. So 2009 was actually the first time that I gave a talk um, and it, it was BoostCon back then. I, I submitted three talks and uh, all of them had been accepted, which was a horrible thing. Don't do that. Um, but it was a ton of fun. It was the first place that I had actually given a, a, a real professional feeling C++ talk. And um, oh, yeah. Isn't that kind of funny? Like the, the curse of, so, you know, I don't speak as much. But it's like I'll put in two. I'll put in two proposals at most conferences in one year. I'll come up with two, and and that'll go through. But yes, it, it is a curse. Um, and I'm not very smart. At least I, I don't learn quickly. And so I had done that multiple years in a row. And, and finally, <laughs> I kind of like smarted up a bit and decided, okay, one one is good enough. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And so this year you're coming back as a keynote, which is. Absolutely awesome, because I think you had a year hiatus, but we have employing senders and receivers to tame concurrency and embedded systems. Yeah, I'm really excited to come and um, and to first to come and to be invited to give a keynote. Um, just such a, an honor to be able to do that at my favorite conference. Um, it's uh, my family was even excited. They know how much I love this conference and um, it's on uh, senders and receivers. And you know, I. I spend a lot of time talking about embedded things um, because of the, the challenges and some of the problems that we have in the embedded world. And we have been so excited about the sender receiver design um, within the, the different things that we work in, the avenues that we work in, that it really solves some horrible concurrency issues that we have. And so I'm um, sharing that with other people. Very excited about it. Okay. So, can you give me a high level overview? Cause I'm curious, like, you know, I think of the concurrency issues I've run into, how does send in, sender and receivers help us with concurrency? Yeah, great question. So um, this is a different, um, probably a different answer for, for different folks, depending upon what you're trying to solve. But within the design, the main thing that senders provides is a design that handles um, values. So value channels that, we normally are good at that because we design for that and we implement that. And then later we remember, oh yeah, there are, there are errors also in my system that I have to take <laughs> care of. And we kludge those in maybe a little later, but the design yeah. has it built in. What do you do about errors? Where's the error channel? And then yeah. even better than that, cancellation. So often in our designs, we have to deal with, I don't need that work anymore. It's been overcome by events or there's something going on that I no longer need that answer or for, for us, we're handling power management with inside of your chip itself, with inside of your CPU. And we may have shut fabric off. The fabric is not running anymore. We are never going to get an answer for, for a message that we just you know, sent a, a response out for. Um, and so we need to cancel, um, cancel different tasks that are running. And that's hard to do. Um, it, it's always hard to do. And so having a framework, the Really, senders and receivers brings this design in, in P2300 that pulls together value channels, error channels, and cancellation in a conforming way that allows composition. And um, you know, these are really, for, for me, these are key items that I'm always looking for for solutions in an embedded world. Um, but I think all of us are in asynchronicity in general, right? We're trying to solve asynchronous problems. These are three things that we're always trying to figure out. How do we handle them? And it coming together in a design, nice, really nice. So I am, it's kind of funny. I was working with a colleague today and I'm excited to see that because, you know, not on the chip level, but we're working with Citibank and we have that kind of same thing where, you know, in a credit card transaction, when you send something off, you have a, you have a total time to live. And once you pass yeah. that, you, 
you're now in an error state. Even if something's come back, it's like you have to roll suddenly everything back, kind of like a database transaction. Right. Of course, you're not doing it as a transaction on one simple database platform. It's now rolling across multiple, of course, yeah. you know, sometimes networks all the way back because nobody wants to be charged for something they didn't get. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so I will be interested in that. And I noticed on LinkedIn, you were posting that you're looking forward to Luke's talk. I am. Yes. Because that's a uh, case study in zero cost abstractions. Yeah, yeah. So um, Luke has a talk in this. So Luke's talk is really a lot about um, a messaging abstraction that we have dealt with, um, that we've, we've designed and in, in over the last couple of years have really um, expanded that out in such a way where um, we're taking in a lot of different ideas of problems that we can solve at compile time and problems that need to happen at runtime and how do we optimize the solution? And, you know, just to kind of give you a little peek at it, um, we can, we can make decisions based upon uh, what types of messages we're matching to and what type of criteria exists and how many there are Um, at compile time. We can pick maybe the perfect hash algorithm, or we could pick the perfect search algorithm or the perfect, all the different things that we can do. And we run these things at compile time. And so the result is, code that's customized for the data structure as well as the algorithms that are running. Um, And we end up with the optimal solution for every endpoint. That doesn't have to be true across all of our software. Each endpoint can can be optimized along the way. And it has a segment in it that I'm really excited about. Um, Ben Dean, uh, who who I also work with, um, has done a lot of work recently in um, some Boolean algebra that we utilize in order to, um, to make this library work correctly. And the Boolean algebra is just kind of mind blowing the way that it gets presented. And, um, and Ben has actually a, a lightning talk that he's done recently on it. Um, just, just really great engineering and math that comes together to produce something that's just um, a beautiful library. And so, yeah, I'm very excited about it. That's really cool. That's funny you mentioned Ben, because I, Ben is one of the other favorite people. I just, you know, I, I think the thing I love talking with Ben is that for all of his knowledge and I, and I think for how deep it goes, like I remember being on a video call, doing an interview and seeing his library behind him, but yet he could yeah. still impart the information to me in a way that I understood. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, I think that's important, right? It's like, yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. He's, um, he's a, he's just a brilliant communicator. Um, I love working with Ben. I've wanted to work with Ben for countless years and it's just never quite worked out right and so to get this opportunity right now to be able to work with him um we tease or i tease is he smart because he has that british accent or is he really smart in the reaction he actually is just really smart um so <laughs> yes he is <laughs> yes, he's, he's the funny. british accent i think helps but you know <laughs> it helps it definitely adds a flair um, yes that it does he has a talk coming up also at at uh, the conference of C++ now, and that I'm super excited about, which is the underpinnings of the sender and um, sender receiver library that I'll be using. So oh, wow. I'll be talking about it from a user's point of view. Like, how do you use senders and receivers? This question comes up a lot. Um, Ben's design and implementation of senders and receivers is really geared towards bare metal embedded systems, has some unique problems to it, and it has some very unique solutions that he's come up with. Beautiful design. Um, and so I'm excited about him being able to share that with everybody. That's so cool. Okay. So I could definitely go on with you for hours, but I, mm-hmm. so I, and I'm, and in that mind, I'm like, I'm picking my, my topics yeah. really quick here <laughs> in bare metal. What do you think is like the number one difference compared to those of us <laughs> who write for OS? Like what's your number one challenge? That's interesting. Um, it, it is a, It's a different way to think about the problem space and the solution space you have because it's constrained in certain ways. So um, very often, most often, we don't have an allocator. Um, Okay. Because we couldn't have an allocator, we could write an allocator, right? But uh, the type of work that we do, all the allocations generally need to occur before you begin whatever the work is. And the work continues forever. You don't actually exit. So... As an example, when we write our startup code, so we write custom startup code, we have to write all the things in order to get yep. the machine up and going. We write it so that constructors work, right? But we don't ever worry oh, wow. about destructors because um, you know our static objects will construct, but they don't ever go away.